How you doing, YouTube? Mountain Master Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of robust porter time in the form of Hill Farm Sets Everett. Um, I've had this a bunch of times. I was almost absolutely certain that I reviewed this beer before, but I looked and I haven't. So I'm doing it now. How about that? It's called science. Um, yeah, was up there, picked this up from the brewery myself, um, brought a couple bottles back, and we're going to chug one. Uh, what does it say in the bottle? Everett, robust American porter. Um, Everett, uh, 1908 to 1939. Hmm. It's only 31, 31 years old, man. It's a short time. Um, our, was our grandfather's brother. A whole farm side brewery rests upon that land that was once home to him and his 13 siblings in his honor. This porter is crafted American malted barley, English and German roasted malts, American hops, and our ale yeast and water from our well. It is unfiltered and naturally carbonated, uh, uh, decadent in its depth. In complex background of chocolate, coffee, and malty sweetness, this is the ale that I dream of to have shared with Everett. Uh, the whole farm said um, uh, story time runs essentially the same throughout. A um, little bit of different notes based on the beer, 7.2%. Done, done. No, you know, whole farm said to a T. It's just their kind of logo with Everett and simplistic deliciousness. Let's crack this open. Ah, give her a robust pour and a robust porter. Hmm? How about that? Um, so yeah, throw it in this big fatty glass that I like to drink my darker beers out of. I mean, good God, look at that. That is what dreams are made of when it comes to creamy, fluffy creaminess. And you're talking about a malted ball, ball color just a little bit north of that. South of where I like my coffee to look like color wise, infinite creaminess, super tight compact bubbles, and she's just a rich darkness, man. You are definitely not going to grind your shoes with dirt into this couch because, uh, yeah, beer's a hell of a drug. Uh, let's get a nose. <sighs> just big, rich, decadent soft not getting to milk but getting very close to milk chocolateness um you're getting the maltiness and you're getting a malty sweetness you're getting a nice soft roastiness all over off of it nothing too crazy bittering astringent wise um there has to be a rich kind of uh, odiness in here they're talking about just being maltiness uh ba -ba 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 -ba, what they talk about um malted bar okay the american malted barley um, you know, just I feel like there's like an odie kind of sweetness in there, almost like a soft lactose vibe to it. But you can sometimes get that off kind of stouts and porters, even if they don't have that involved. And, and that chocolate it comes off sweet, not milk chocolate sweet, but sweet, bettering it somewhere in between. It's like a multi layered faceted thing. You're getting a soft bitterness from those hops, not too crazy bit enough to balance off all that sweetness. <sighs> decadent, very decadent, rich chocolate a little bit of like almost like if you dropped out <coughs> a lot of sweetness from like a fig i'm getting a little bit of that like fig vibes are not necessarily as sweet and there's a beautiful balance between everything you know the hops are playing a big role in this to kind of green and everything and keep it from getting overly overtly kind of sweet and cloying and dive in cheers textbook beautiful beautiful mouthfeel fluffy creamy what porter should be um when it comes to mouthfeel way more bittering way more roasty than the nose lets on i mean you're getting a big pop of bitterness both from i believe that roasted malts and also from those hops um it's sweet but definitely that bitterness kind of jumps ahead and kind of takes the reins and kind of drives this beer It's not too bitter though. It's getting close for me, but not getting to that point. Every time I sip it, the mouth feels just so beautiful. It's almost like my brain clicks off of trying to think about everything else with the beer and goes, oh my God, this is so beautiful feel wise. So it's kind of hard to get into the beer and kind of think about it because the mouth feels that so fucking perfect. It's not even funny. So yeah, the bittering uh, on a roast malt kind of things on the kind of hop kind of thing makes sense. The bittering doesn't come off to anything fruity or um, on hop and things doesn't come off like fruity or, or bittering or, or herbal or any of that stuff. If anything, it is kind of like a tea, like herbal thing, but it, it's so just straight generic bittering, generic marching order bittering um, that it just kind of works. 
Mm. Enough sweetness to kind of ride it through. The chocolate, multi-layered, multi-faceted, like I talked about on the nose, you get a little bit of soft chocolate edges close to milk chocolate. Get a little bit that is kind of like medium kind of sweetness, getting a ton of the kind of bigger chocolate in there. And honestly, it just keeps coming back to the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is it's beautiful. It's what porters should be. It's what porters strive to be. It's what everybody wants to do. And to wrap it all up in a nice little bow, more specifically for myself, zero of that kind of metallic, bittering, astringency thing that I'm very susceptible to a lot of um, porters, lower ABV porters. Yeah, 7%, it's not that low, but I've had much, much worse from much higher ABV porters. So the cleanliness and elongatedness of the beer, kind of what Hill Farms that hangs their hat on uh, is definitely readily apparent in this beer. So yeah, I mean, that's it. There's, it's not overtly complex. I mean, there's depths of chocolate and there's depths of bitterness in there. Uh, the mouth feels overly decadent, but it's not like some kind of nuanced thing where you had to dig with this crazy flavor. It's just super well-made, super well-executed in, you know, very brash, very bold in what it's trying to do while at the same time being very <sighs> welcoming. It's tasty. What more do you want? Uh, let's talk about it. It's one of the better porters, robust porters that I've had as a late. Yeah, it's one of the best. This, and honestly, I've never had it fresh, but a, pre well, I shouldn't say I never had it fresh. A old school big beer series, a several couple years aged, uh, smutty nose robust porter are pretty much cash money when it comes to kind of robust porters for me. So take those to big beer series. The old ones that came in these big kind of 22, 20 ounce milliliter bottles, or 20 ounce milliliter, because that makes sense. They're like uh, 20, 22 ounce bottles. Those old school ones with a couple of years on them. This, even in the seat now that it's fresh, this was bottled three months ago. Um, they're cream of the crop for me. Value and availability, I think it was like seven bucks, six to eight bucks. Come on now. Brewery only. And leave you with it if you like what you like to say. If you like robust porters, if you like malt forward beers, if you like balance between your sweetness and bitterness, even in your darker beers, if you like squeaky chairs, it's not squeaking as much now, but if you like well made beers, because uh, that's what this is an absolutely fantastically well made beer. So if you like good beers, you'll probably like this one. There you go. Now they're reviewing the books. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Um, down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little uh, robust porter right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>